real estate is about freedom, choice freedom, time freedom, and money freedom, and the impact you can make with that freedom. But it doesn't come without cost. Your freedom takes work. That's why Neil Timmons brings together the tools you need to build your real estate legacy, from tips and tricks to interviews with industry titans. It's all here in one place. Real Grit. Let's get to it. Welcome, everybody, to Real Grit. I'm Neil Timmons. Hey, I'm here with Corey Geary. He's out of the Phoenix market, but he's nationwide. He runs a seven-figure business nationwide. Uh, he's been in this uh, in this business for for some time. I'm excited to talk to him because I know he's uh, gone through quite a journey in life and also in this business to find his way to to the success level that he's having today. So, everybody, welcome me. Welcome, Corey. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Neil. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm truly blessed and honored to be here, man. I'm I'm doing great, man. Just uh, enjoying this uh, holiday season. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, and and you've got a little one, so it makes it even uh, doubly special when, uh, when oh, holidays roll around. It was amazing. It was her first Christmas, you know, first yeah. gifts, a bunch of pictures of her, you know, opening up gifts, even though she couldn't do it too well. She's only four and a half months old, yeah. but we were opening the gifts for her, taking a bunch of pictures. I mean, it was, yeah, it was awesome. That's pretty exciting. Just to think forward for the next year, it's going to be, it's going to be nuts to see the transition from, from today to where she'll be in a year from now. Yeah. Yeah. Christmas will only get more and more yeah. special as she like realizes the, uh, yeah. the meaning of it. You know what I mean? It's going to be awesome. So yeah, no, it gets more excited as a parent too. When you, when you see what's what, everything there, some of that, as you get older, it loses a little of its luster relative to presence, but when you get the kids involved, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. It brings that magic back. Yeah, You're totally right. Yeah, yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah. That's exciting, man. Well, thanks for taking the time to connect up here. I, I appreciate it. I'm, I'm pumped to talk to you here. Tell me, um, you know, for the audience's sake, you know, how'd you get in this business? Yeah, that's a great question, man. I get asked that all the time. So uh, when I got into this industry, I was dealing cards at the casino. I was a blackjack dealer. I uh, done it for 17 years, got way too complacent in that job because it was a high paying job. I was making six figures, you know, via tips and uh, working six hours a day, just living the party lifestyle. And that's what I did for the majority of my life uh, up to this point. And, uh, but the good thing was, I was able to save some money uh, throughout uh, my, my dealing cards journey. And uh, we used to watch that show, uh, me and my girlfriend at the time, that flip or flop show with Tarek Al Musa. Yep. I mean, I think, I think it's one of the shows that got a lot of people started. Yep. And I was watching the show. And uh, my girlfriend at the time, who was a part-time realtor, part-time blackjack dealer, she goes, why don't you flip a house so I can list it? That was literally this, the, word, the, 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 the thing she said to me. And yeah. I was like, I was like, I don't know. It's, it seems easy enough. You know, 30 minutes, you make $80,000. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Derek did it. In, he did it in 22 with commercials. Right? With commercials. Right, yeah, right, right. right. Yeah. You, you have a couple of hiccups. And then at the end of the day, you're always making money. That's right. the, the, what the show portrayed. So it, here's the funny thing, man. I was on my morning run the next day. I was running around the neighborhood and I saw one of those bandit signs that said, uh, you know, fix and flip, uh, buy price 250, ARV 350. I can't remember the exact yeah. numbers on it. And, and I was like, huh. And I, I just kind of saw it as a sign. So I stopped on my run. I called that phone number. I bought that house. It was from a company called uh, Net Worth Realty here local in our market that's yeah. kind of uh, similar to New Western. I think yep. a lot of people know. Yep. I bought the house. Took me six months to fix and flip and I made $8,000. Uh, that was my very first real estate deal, dude. And uh, yeah, yeah, I learned a lot. It was, it was, it was good. Um, yeah. I didn't lose money in the first deal. Yeah. And uh, fast forward a little bit. I, I started going to local RIAs here. Yeah. Uh, I started networking with wholesalers, met a, a wholesaler here locally. I bought a second house from him. Uh, and I, I took me three months and I made 20,000. So that was like a, a home run for right. me. It was definitely a home run. Uh, on the third house that I bought, I bought four properties all at once. I ended up partnering with somebody else from the casino on these. Uh, it was very unfortunate for him, but we we uh, we bought four houses all at once. We had to use a new contractor because my old contractor was not working out, mm -hmm. but the new contractor was even worse. Like we didn't check him against the ROC. We didn't do our due diligence on him, check, you know, with previous clients, and, you know, anything like that. And he took us to the cleaners um, and he robbed us. Mm -hmm. And we, between the, the two of us, we lost a quarter million dollars on those four houses uh, we had to wholesale the deals back to the, the wholesaler. We got really uh, taken advantage of. He saw a mark on our head and, uh, you know, it reset me. 
and it sent me back to zero. I lost all my life savings. I lost my, obviously my previous flip money, my 401k money that I had from the casino. And uh, I was wow. like, okay, well, yeah, what do I do now? I didn't want to give up the, the, the partner I had. Obviously he gave up and he's still dealing cards to this day at the casino. Yeah. And I didn't want to give up. And so like, I literally researched on Google how do wholesalers get deals? So I like, I figure I gotta get, I gotta figure out how these wholesalers do it because if I have no money, uh, at least I have my job still, so I'm still able to like provide for myself. Um, and I researched on Google, and, and who I found was Sean Terry. Yeah, and, yeah. And so I went down that rabbit hole. I bought his course, ended up joining his mastermind, and that was kind of the beginning of my my wholesale journey and and just my well my real estate journey as a whole. Um, and so that's where it all started. And that, and that I bought my first house, uh, end of 2016, probably joined Sean Terry's mastermind somewhere in the end of 2017. Okay. Dude, what made you, gig? I mean, uh, a quarter million and everybody's taking lollops, uh, you know, womps in this business. There's no way around it. Uh, but yeah, for, for that to be house number, what, three, four, five, six, it, it was three. Yes. Yeah, so it was, it was yeah. transaction three, but I bought four all at once. Now that, yeah. that was the first mistake. That was an idiot mistake. I, I was just like, cause I felt like, Oh yeah, I was successful in my last couple of deals. You know, let's just turn up the volume here. Right. And it, no, it was the biggest mistake I ever made. And you know, geez, I, if I'd have had a mentor or if I've been part of a mastermind before that, or, you know, maybe that wouldn't have happened to me, you know, but I didn't know what I didn't know. And, right. you know, but what made you keep going? I mean, it'd just be e the easier solution would have just been forget this. Right. And that's what my partner did. You right. Know? He just like, screw this. And he's still dealing cards. This right. I just didn't want to lay down and die. I was like, if I just give this up, then it's all over. I'll never get my money back. Yeah. The only way I'm going to get my money back is if I continued forward. Correct. That's the way I looked at it. I was like, if I just stop this and go back to dealing cards and, for, and say, forget it, then I've, that money's gone forever. Um, you know, just working in the casino. And I, there was a reason why I wanted to pursue real estate and why I felt like I needed to do this. And I, I just, I refused to lay down and die. What was that? Know? What was that? Why? What was that innate burning desire to, 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 you know, burn the ships, if you will, and go, I'm not going back. I'm only going forward. What, what was inside of you at that moment in your life that said, this is, uh, the only way out is forward. The only way out is forward. So, I, I, my why is different now than my why was then. Obviously, sure. uh, then it was just you know me chasing the dollar. You know, I was really like the the, the real. It, it just because it hurt so bad to yeah. lose the money. Yeah, it hurt so bad that I that was what I was using as fuel to move forward. It's like I, I, the only way I can get that money back is if I continue forward and continue doing deals. But I had no money, so I was yeah. like okay, well, how do I do that? I, I was like, well, how do wholesalers get deals? Right. Let's, yeah. let's go down that rabbit hole. Yeah. And so really the, the why then was just really chasing the dollar. Now my why now is completely different than my Absolutely. why is then, Absolutely. but it was really just chasing that dollar. And I, I, I refuse to be defeated because yeah. I have always hated losing. And that's always since I was a little yeah. kid, I just hate losing. Like if I lose, I want to, why did I lose? What did I do wrong? How do I pivot? And that, that was really what that burning desire it's, was. Like, it's a, a hate losing more than you love winning. Actually. It I do, to, man. That, it, that, burns. That, that, it burns. And that's a fuel. Yeah. It just yeah. burns so bad. And it's like, yeah. Oh God, I, I, I gotta, I gotta figure this out. What's going on. And so <laughs> it was unfortunately a very painful experience, but it was an experience that I had to go through. Right. Um, and and we, we, we captured some of that money back, obviously through uh tax write-off. And then I, we did, we did try suing the, uh, the, the general contractor yeah. and he paid a little bit back. I think we got back maybe $30,000 or something to that nature. And actually the, the guy passed recently yeah. here in the last year. And, he, and I even donated money to his family, uh, when he passed, because, you know, it, it was very unfortunate how he passed. Um, but, uh, you know, it was just, uh, an extreme learning experience, you know, and, um, I have not lost money like that in a real estate deal since I have lost a little bit. Like uh, we lost one, a uh, one deal this month on uh, this, this year, uh, it was a, a fix and flip deal. And we lost like 5k. Um, but it, we've not lost, you know, money like that. Most of our deals now we, we do pretty well. No, you're, you're, we, we you're do. a monster now. You don't get to this point without having, without using that fuel to get educated, to have tremendous success and then go to work. And that's one of the things I respect about you most. I know you work and I know you got a terrific team that, that yeah uh, that puts in the effort because they want outcomes 
They want outcomes, right? And I, I take them along for the journey with success with me. And I'll touch on that education. You just said that that was probably the biggest, that's the biggest reason why I, I've been able to do what, I, what I've done is because I've always been involved in some sort of mastermind, mm-hmm. some sort of direct coaching, some sort of like, you know, just trying to have somebody teach me how to get ahead of the curve. And that's been very crucial. I've probably, I probably spent, you know, some of the rounds of quarter million dollars on education throughout yeah. my whole real estate journey. Yeah. We're about to, I'm about to join another mastermind coming up this year. That's pretty heavy. Uh, and then I feel like it's the next level that we need to, 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 to go to. So um, yeah, it's just been, it's been great. Talk, take me back to 2017. Um, you got educated through Sean Terry's stuff and then bring me forward in the business. What, what did that, how, how does that look like from 17 forward? So but obviously uh, in the beginning with Sean Terry, you know, he was teaching how to do the local, you know, wholesaling model. Right. So like literally I'm out there putting banded signs. Uh, we're doing a little bit of direct mail. And uh, it took me about like, uh, I don't know, eight to 10 months to get my first real wholesale deal direct to seller myself. And the funny thing is when I got my first deal, I wholesaled that deal to the wholesaler I was buying deals from in the beginning of my journey. So like yeah. I, his name full was Chris. I, yeah. Full circle. His name was Chris. I I called Chris up and I was like, Hey, I got this deal. Uh, can you look at it? And he was, he looked at it and he goes, yeah, I'll buy it. I was like, okay. And I made $10,000. I was like, boom, proof of concept. You know right. what I mean? I was like, all right, right. this works. So, and then, you know, a little, little bit more fast forward. I ended up, um, you know, uh, obviously still doing coaching and mentorship, uh, there's another guy named Justin Kobe who I was doing coaching with, and he was doing cold calling at the time. And I was like, okay, so cold calling seems like to be a really cheap way to get leads. Mm-hmm. So I created a call floor in my living room. I put a bunch of cubicles in my living room and I hired college kids and, you know, whoever, whoever else responded to my Craigslist ad to come in and cold call for me. And so, you know, that way I could get cheap leads. And it worked. It, it worked pretty well. I was, you know, doing about five deals, maybe five to seven deals a month. Um, I was going out to all the appointments in, in person, direct, you know, directly to the seller, you know, in belly to belly. Yep. And, it, it, and I was still working in the casino, but it, it was brain damage because I was running the call floor, yep. doing the real estate business and working in the casino. I was like sleeping like three hours a night. It was, but I was making money. It was like, I had traction. Yep. And uh, up to 2000, that's going on up to about 2018. And I was in the mastermind bo- called Boardroom mm-hmm. with Sean Terry, Kent Clothier. A lot of people know who they are. Yep. Um, and Sean Terry, one, one of my presentations, he made me, uh, he made me promise uh, and he made me swear to God in front of everybody that I was going to quit the casino by the end of 2018. Otherwise, I had to give $15,000 to a charity of his choosing. And uh, fast forward a little bit. I, I'm getting towards the end of 2018. And I'm like, oh man, I don't think I'm going to quit the casino because I'm making good money there. I'm making good money in real estate. I can continue doing this. I'll just pay the fifteen thousand uh, dollars to, to 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 continue uh, doing what I'm doing. Yeah. And I was going to make good on my on my bet, but yeah. I was like, all right. And what what happened was uh, a bunch of the dealers, the blackjack dealers, are going to uh, Vegas for uh, New Year's Eve yeah. in 2018. I, I decided to go with them. And I go ice skating on one of the uh, top of the casinos. Uh, they have like this frozen little pond they put on the top of the casino. Yeah. I'm ice skating drunk. I fall and break my wrist. <laughs> I'm like, holy crap, you can't deal cards with a broken wrist. Nope. So I'm like, this has got to be a sign that I got to quit. And because otherwise I have to go on FMLA for three or four months until I heal and then try to. So I literally came back at my broken wrist, came back from Vegas. I put my, 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 my notice into the casino. I was like, this is it. And uh, as soon as I put my notice in, my, in the casino, they walked me out. And that was the end of that. And I was full-time real estate from that point forward. Tony Robbins says, life, ha- life happens for me, not to me. Oh, boy, does it ever. I mean, everything that has happened to me in this journey, it, 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 there's a lesson to be learned. And it's been to guide me. Uh, you know, and it po- everything probably was before that too. I just didn't notice it because right. the way I was living my life. Yeah. And now it's like you, you, you kind of have an awakening and you start seeing this stuff and how it's guiding you. And it's just been wonderful to, to, to say the least. 
you know, that's an incredible story, an incredible journey about how to get out of, of the business that yeah, you're, God you're was in. like, no, you're not, you're no, not make, you're that, done. You're not paying that 15 K screw that here. <laughs> boom. Break your wrist. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Okay. Wow. So, all right. So, so now you're, you're, you're full-time in real estate. You're mending this broken wrist. What's that, what's that look like? And then that will be 2019. Yeah, 2019, you know, we, we get to a point where we're doing like maybe five to 10 deals a month local, actually, you know, really decent here in Phoenix, you know, as everyone knows, it's a very competitive market. Very. Uh, I, I don't believe in that, you know, everyone's like, oh, I don't want to play in Phoenix, it's competitive. I, I, mean, I, did, I was doing 10 deals a month here. Um, so we were doing all right. We ended up getting into an office because the HOA complained about like the cars being parked out in front of my house every single day. They're threatening to find me. They were thinking like I was having keg parties or something. I'm like, no, I, I'm running a business out of here. How, like, long, how, how long were you running a business out of that house? It was like a year, year and a half. <laughs> uh, that, that is good for, for the audience to, to understand because so many people, you and I both see it is, you know, they get in the business, they get well, like three deals. And they're like, cool, I'm getting an office. I'm going to go, I want to go as high as I can. in that, that building down there, I'm like, no, uh, no, man. You wouldn't believe this, dude. The office I'm in today, and there is four of us in the office. Do the uh, I own the building with a couple other guys, and we all have rent. We all have leases. My lease is three hundred fifty dollars a month. Oh, I love uh, that. Oh, dude, I'm. The, what more do you need? At some point, if you want to, if you want to show off, you don't need to do it in the office. That's that. That's right. not the spot to do it. No, right? it's not. That's great. Yeah. yeah, no, we got forced into the office because of the HOA. Yeah, you got it. I was like, I was like, all right, well, let's get an office in. And so, like, right. got an office about two miles down uh, the road from my house. And I'm basically still in almost the same office. I'm actually across the, the sidewalk now, but uh, from when I first moved. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're still in this in this building and uh, this to this day. So um, but we don't we don't run a call floor anymore. Uh, I got rid. I scratched that that idea because that was brain damage. Like I could outsource cold calling, right? You know what I mean. Right. Uh, it was just it was tr you know he a headache managing those type of employees. Uh, I, I would never do it again. <laughs> right. So knowing what you uh, what you said is you'd outsource it. That's what you would do if, if, if not doing it again. You'd outsource it. Right. Let yeah. somebody else run the call floor who knows more about that industry than you do yep. and for a fraction of the cost, because right. most of these, uh, you can outsource it to, you know, these third world countries, uh, and th that are way more proficient at it than we are four or five, so, six bucks an hour. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. All right. So you scrap the call <laughs> floor and then what'd you do from a marketing standpoint? So uh, beginning of 2020, uh, right before COVID really kind of took, you know, its stamp into the, our economy, yeah. uh, that was a, a nightmare. I decided yeah. to go nationwide virtual. And uh, I, you know, I was in a couple of different masterminds. One that you're familiar with mm -hmm. was uh, the Joe Dillon mastermind. I mm -hmm. uh, was in his mastermind for a good year, year and a half. Great group of guys. Yep, uh, great. I love that mastermind. I, I, I'd promote that to anybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, you met a guy there by the name of Nick Perry. Come really good friends with him. I've obviously been friends with Sean Terry for a while. And these guys are starting to trailblaze the nationwide model. Right. And uh, so we ended up switching nationwide in 2020. Uh, up to that point where we were trying to do some PPC, uh, we weren't really doing, we we're trying to outsource it. We we're getting our asses handed to us, you know, through, uh, you know, how much it was costing, you know, outsourcing it. So in 2020, I decided to bring it in house, actually decided to learn how to do PPC myself and do it nationwide. And that's when we went nationwide in 2020, I did make a, a, a mistake that I would never recommend anybody who is thinking about going nationwide. I, when I first went nationwide, I turned all, I turned off all my local marketing. And so all my local deal flow stopped. And then I had nationwide deal flow. That was the biggest mistake I ever made because the local models, what was paying the bills, right. kept keeping me fed, keeping the business going. And I turned it off to try this new nationwide model. And that was horrible because it took us a, a few months to get traction. We yep. couldn't sell our deals because we couldn't find buyers. I mean, it was, it was painful. And I had, I had the same overhead 
And so like, I literally ran in the red for three months, like bad in the red before I actually, of course, COVID hit. Right. And there was all this uncertainty with the COVID. And I mean, it was like, I was uh, laying in bed at night thinking, man, I have to close the doors. I might have to start this over on the, on the local side. I mean, right. it was, it was very stressful. And then we finally started catching traction on uh, towards the middle of 2020 and, and in the end. And we actually finished out the year profitable, barely. Okay. <laughs> in 2020. And that was kind of the beginning of the journey of my nationwide wholesaling uh, model that I was doing. And then 2021, we really cranked it up. We ent ent ended up in implementing Novations, which was a game changer in our company. Game changer. And now, yeah. Now yeah. we're a Novation, Novation first company, wholesale second. Yeah. And so we're still doing the nationwide model with PPC as our main marketing channel. We do do some, uh, we do have some co-calling going on and some texting going on because I do believe in multiple marketing channels. Sure. But the PPC has been our, our, our main uh, breadwinner for the, uh, for the, for the majority so, um, yeah, up to the, up to, uh, all through 2020, you know, we've been just cranking along, uh, we play in 42 States. We're doing pretty well, you know, obviously we're always, always uh, desiring to get better at, at our craft. Um, uh, like, like for example, this year I shut down the company for a month and a half, maybe almost two months, uh, to revamp the business with sharper business solutions. Oh, yeah. Know. Yeah. So I That's hired scary. those guys yep. to come in with, yeah. And revamp the whole business. I ended up, you know, you know, firing most of my crew, uh, based off of their, you know, their uh, PI index test, making sure yep. the right people are in the right seat. So we went through a lot of change this year too, to get better systems and processes in place. And, uh, we, we just relaunched again, maybe a month and a half ago, and we're already cranking along pretty well. So we're going to deal flow wise per month. About what are you hitting? Uh, so we're back up to now. We're probably going to do uh, December. We should probably get about 15 to 16 contracts mm -hmm. for the month of December. Before the shutdown, we were doing anywhere from 20 to 30 contracts a month. Wow. So, yeah. So it was it was it was cranking pretty well. I just I was trying to crank up the volume even more, and there was just a lot of holes in the business, and uh, there was just not good SLPs and, and structure in place. Right. And uh, it was just like I was you know, all this overhead was being spent yep. and not getting, and I was turning up overhead not getting better results out of it. Right. And I was like, there's something wrong. And so I ended up having a consultation call with Sharper yep. and you know, that was kind of how the, I was like, all right, let's, let's revamp this. Sometimes, sometimes you got to take one step back to go to take a quantum leap all, forward all day, all yeah. day, you know, even though we're going to probably hit 1.5 million this year. Uh, no, we are going to hit 1.5. No problem. Uh, we might even do more than that. Uh, but you know, I was pushing, uh, for like 2.5 is what my goal was, but it yep. wasn't, it wasn't happening. And I was like, okay, what's wrong. And that was the, that was the, that was the problem was our foundation. So, you know, with a, with a solid foundation, you know, I see no problems of us doing three, even four, maybe even 5 million next year. Yeah. So, well, the systems run the business, the people run the systems, right? Yes. Systems run the business, people run the systems. And so it takes having proper systems and proper structure in place in order for the people to run other relies your two people dependent, right? When we need to be system dependent in the business. Oh, absolutely. 120%. And I'm learning more and more that as I'm moving along here and I, I'm not an integrator type person. So I don't have that like thought right. process. I'm a yeah. visionary. Yeah, I right. create a mess and then, you know, I, I need like the mess cleaned up. It's like, yeah. <laughs> And so I'm learning that as I'm going along. And now we even have an integrator who is in the, in the company who I'll be training over to CEO in 2022. So we've got a good game plan for that starting next year. And uh, yeah, really, really excited for uh, 2022. Well, let's talk about 22. Where, where are you headed? Where we're headed is we're headed. Uh, the goal is 5 million yeah. uh, with a 30% profit margin minimum. Yep. to the bottom line. Yep. And uh, so that's the real estate side, uh, uh, pick up some more creative financing deals structure. We're actually in, this is very, I uh, learned this from Sean Terry. We're going to integrate this into our company where we're, since we don't have a 401k plan for the team members, right. we're going to create an LLC between all of us and any creative finance type deals we get, we're going to hold that LLC for the business. Oh, cool for for everybody. That for, that's for like everybody. your that's your that's your four hundred one k, if you will. That's going to be the four hundred one k plan. So we're we're, we're going to be doing that next year. Obviously, still be cranking away the novations, doing yeah. the nationwide model. We've really cracked the code on that. We're yeah. very successful with it. So on the real estate side, 
that's kind of the vision there. Obviously we, we, I, I do coaching and mentorship now too. I have a mastermind that I run now. Yeah. So the plan is to scale with that. I'm going to be start working with Cody Sperber, uh, the beginning of next year, sure. I'm joining his mastermind. I'm going to be, uh, work, uh, hiring him. Hopefully I'm supposed to meet with him uh, this week or Great. next for coaching and mentorship through him. So I'm always looking for more coaching, more mentorship, more masterminds. How can I scale? How can I grow? Not only in business, but personal, spiritually, you know, and physically too. So it's, yeah. Without that, it, it, would it be fair to say without the mastermind, the coaching, everything you've gone through from an education standpoint, you wouldn't be in the, the personal happiness that you possess today and with, with your wife and your baby, that wouldn't exist without everything you've mm -hmm. gone through. Not even close, yeah. not even close. I, I always say real estate saved my life. And uh, what I mean by that, it doesn't has nothing to do with finances right. at all. Like the money that was, that's the last thing that, that was the most important thing now. Like in the first, the beginning, that's what I was chasing. Mm -hmm. Now it's the last thing I'm chasing because real estate really saved my life because it really awakened me onto my spiritual journey that I'm, I'm on. And uh, it taught me to love myself. Yeah. to really understand what uh, issues I have internally, how to deal with them. And, you know, I used to be a heavy alcoholic, uh, drugs, and I've been sober now for uh, black Friday was one year, completely sober. Congrats. Yeah. Thanks. Man. So awesome. It is awesome. Yeah. It's not, my life has not been, I mean, th this is the most beautiful thing that's ever happened to me in my life. It's never been better. Um, so like I said, obviously, you know, I've just recently got married this year. I've yeah. got a baby this year. Yeah. None of that stuff would have happened to me in my old life. The old Corey, none of that stuff was happening to me. This stuff didn't, like, I always wanted to have, like, a, a kid. I always wanted to have meet that perfect woman. But it was not happening in my, in my old lifestyle, yeah. you know. But once God saw that I was ready, then he, he positioned me to, to where it could happen. Yeah. And so like, it's just been an, an amazing, beautiful journey. Uh, just from that, from that aspect, like I said, the, the money doesn't, I mean, the, that, that's like the least yeah. of what, yeah. the, what's come out of this whole real estate journey. I, I know you, and I know this impacts uh, your team as well and how you uh, communicate, integrate with your team, how you, uh, just how you guys interact. So t talk to us about your team. What's it look like and what's a culture like on the team? So the team now is uh, we have one sales manager who is going to be also the CEO coming up uh, next year. And we run our uh, acquisitions virtual. We have virtual acquisition yeah. team members now. So there's three virtual acquisitions under my main sales manager. Uh, I have a lead uh, disposition manager, yep. and then I have a junior disposition, and then, then uh, he runs the virtual TC company. So that's the team now, which was a lot, it's a lot less than what it was before. Before we had like nine people in the office, yep. crazy overhead. Yep. Um, so the culture, the culture is great. You know, yeah. we let everybody partake in all the investments that we do, whether it be uh, like it's talking about the creative financing stuff or yeah. even fix and flips. So I do, do, I still do fix and flips here locally. Yeah. We let the team members come in on fix and flips that we're doing if they want. And any other uh, crazy ventures that I'm doing, like I'm in oil and gas. Oil and gas. Yeah. yeah, I'm in oil and gas. I, I'm, I'm in NFTs, crypto. I mean, there's so many things that I'm right. doing. Uh, that, you know, I allow them to partake if they want, uh, you know, I want to be able to, because at the end of the day, your team members want to get rich too. Correct. You know, and I yeah. want to take them along for the ride if I can for right. whatever I can do. You know, they're not employees. We don't treat them as employees. Right. You know, the, it's not how it's ran, you know, and this is how you keep your rock stars. It, it really is, is, is you treat them well. Correct. Yep. No, that's, that's exactly right. Let's do this. I want to move on to our final segment, what I call four, four impact your favorite quote. I'm going to pull it up here and I'm going to, I'm going to read it back to you unless you know it off the top of your head. Uh, I, I probably know it. Yeah, 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 exactly. I will not leave this life without my best intentions. Yeah. That was just one night, you know, when I was, uh, I was actually drunk and, uh, you know, it, it popped in my head and I rolled it on my whiteboard and at the time it made me cry. It was like, it was so emotional. It just like, came to me. And, and that's, that's how I really feel, man. I'm not going to leave this life behind with the absolute best intentions possible. 
I'm not gonna, I'm gonna make sure I leave my mark on this earth mm -hmm. before I pass and go and before I go meet the big guy. Yeah. And that way I know I have left my legacy, not just only in finances, but also in spirituality and, and, and every other kind of teachings I can hand down to my daughter or the people around me in my life. So I just, I will not leave this life without my absolute best intentions. Yeah. See, I love that. And that's where you and I connect super well is that uh, it is about making a legacy, not just through dollars, right? People some kind of, can sometimes confuse that. It's making the mark on your community, on, on your family. The, uh, yes. they, you know, the, the dollars will soon enough be forgotten or spent. It is. What did you do for these people? Right. How did you change? How did you alter them? How did, you know, that team that you're dealing with, how did you change their life? How did, you know, the transition you made from, from your old life to your new life, right? And, yeah. and, the, and the people that were along that journey are still on that journey with you, the impact that they made, um, you know, that is a legacy that they've touched you and, and shaped you into to, to the person that you are today and the person you're becoming, which is a better version of yourself today. Absolutely. It's and, tremendous. And, and, and if I could teach this and, and believe that impact on other people's lives, you know, maybe some of these people will have a, a, an awakening before, like, I, I feel like I had my awakening late in my life. You know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm 44 now, you know, and I didn't really start, uh, thinking about entrepreneurship and this real estate journey. And that, that was when I was 39, 30, 30, yeah, whatever it was. So, I mean, I started kind of late in life, you know, so I, you know, I wish I would have started when I was in his twenties or thirties, but you know, sure. uh, but if I can leave this mark, you know, on, you know, when I passed and then I've done my job. Yeah. So, yeah. What do you think holds most investors back back? Meaning, well, you know, from, absolutely. from, from taking that, from, from where you were, right? From going, I got knocked down in uh, house number three to digging deep and moving forward. Yep. Mindset. 120% hmm. it's mindset. And it's, it's really, uh, why, why is there some people who can go to a seminar and they'll, they'll leave that seminar. Some people will take action and be successful. And then the majority of people won't do anything and nothing ever comes of it because they don't have they don't have true value in themselves and, and know their, their true self-worth. Yeah. They don't have true love for themselves. They don't feel like they deserve it. It's all mindset. Yeah. And I say it's 80% mindset, 20% tactics. You know, it, it, that, that's, that's the complete picture. You can get all the, ta the tactics parts is easy. Correct. You know, you, it's all, like, it's do all, this, it's, do this, do this. Yeah. Correct. It's all, yeah. Uh, you know, you're right. Somebody goes, they all get, everybody gets all the same information. Yeah. And why does a person succeed and fail? And I, yeah, over and over and over again, we hear the same information over and over correct. and over again at every event, every mastermind, every place we go. It's like in every book. I mean, but why do some people not make it or, or a lot? Most people don't, don't. make it is because of the mindset. It's a, that's totally it. Even in my own mastermind, I brought in a guy, uh, cause I don't teach mindset, I teach all the tactics, but I'm like, I need someone to teach mindset stuff yeah, in my group. Right. So I brought in a guy named Pat Precourt. And Pat, he's, he's Pat's excellent. a good friend. Pat's a Pat's, good friend of mine. He's a wonderful guy. Oh yeah. my God, man. And he's inner game. Yes. He stuff is. that he teaches is amazing. So like, I'm like, bro, just come in my group. And of course I paid them. And as I come in my group, add some value, they, you know, these people could use it. And even I could use it. We always can use it. I yeah. always hear that stuff over and over again. And, Correct. And yeah. It, it's just, you Dude, always paddle, paddle change your life, man. Yeah, absolutely. He's amazing, bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, he's good. Hey, outside of real estate, what are you most passionate about? Well, now my family, but yeah. I mean, yeah, um, that, that little uh, baby, yeah, little baby, but yeah. self development. I mean, I, I I love always working on myself. You know, on my morning routine. Uh, I mean, I'm big into meditation. Yeah, big into prayer. I, I do cold plunges. You're doing cold plunges. Yes, I've been yeah. following you. Yeah, yeah, it, I and, love cold and setting plunge. crazy records. I tried to do a cold plunge last time I was in Phoenix, which was uh, I was there maybe three four weeks ago. I couldn't get in. I was in there 15 seconds. You you. You guys set minutes. The, the first minute's the roughest. But yes, after you get past is. the first minute, it 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 becomes good. Like yeah, once yeah. you control your breathing, yeah, it, it's once you control your breathing, then the pain goes away. Yeah, I'm big in the Wim Hof. I yeah. love Wim Hof. I follow him. I do his breathing. Obviously, yes. I do the cold plunges. You know, he, he uh, one of my bucket lists now is to hike uh, Mount Kilimanjaro with him. He does it once a year with a okay. group of people. I, that would be absolutely amazing wow. to hike yeah. up with Wim Hof. Uh, so I'm big into that stuff. And of course, you know, I'm big into reading. Um, 
obviously I'm big into other like, uh, you know, uh, financial types. I, I'm big into cryptocurrency, yeah. NFTs. Uh, I, I love doing LPs with other businesses. I like buying into other businesses yeah. uh, where I don't have to be involved in with the day to day. So that's like where I like to do my capital. Yep. So if I, you know, I'm always trying to make my capital go to work for me. I don't that's like right. the money to just stay in the bank. It's a waste that's if the right. money just stays in the bank. So yep. I'm always trying to figure out where I can park capital next, whether it be real estate or an LP venture I can get into or cryptocurrency. So, yeah. um, so I'm, I'm big into that stuff and other side hobbies. I mean, I love snow skiing. I love scuba diving, stuff like that. You know, just love you're, traveling. You're and, an uh, adventure adventure. I don't want to say junkie, but you're an adventure seeker. Yeah. I've always been an adrenaline junkie. Yeah. That's, that's for sure. Yeah. 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 What's your favorite way to, to make an impact to contribute? My favorite way now to make an impact is giving back to the industry of everything I've learned uh, throughout my journey and what's made me successful. And that's why I started the mastermind group uh, is so I could give back. And we, we, we started the group. It's a very inexpensive group to get into compared to most masterminds. And uh, it's been very powerful. I mean, uh, we have about 40 members in the group now. And a lot of those guys are killing it. Some of them are killing it on a level. Uh, they're, they're like doing more deals than me. I mean, some of them are just absolutely just cry. I love seeing that. That's cool. So I love well, going to the events and yeah. speaking at the events and, you know, just helping people in any way possible get over their hurdles. Because, uh, you know, that's what right. people did for me when I started. That's right. You know, it's like. So that's my way of giving back to the industry right now. So people want to follow you or find out more about the mastermind. Where can they find you? Yeah, just easy. Social media is the best. I'm pretty active on okay. both platforms. Uh, Corey Geary for Facebook and the Corey Geary for Instagram. And I'm always posting a bunch of mindset content on there, or I'm talking about, you know, maybe a specific topic in the business. So follow me on there for sure. And if you ever want to, you can hit me up on there through DM and it's me who answers the DM. I don't have like a VA on there anywhere. Yeah. So yeah, you absolutely. Follow yeah. You're me. real. It's you. It's, it's me right now. Unless it gets scale so big, yeah, yeah. you know, where I can't like, obviously like Cody Sperber, he, he's not the one answering his DMs. That's right. Think, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll make sure we drop those links in the, uh, in the show notes. I, I really appreciate you taking the, the time to connect up here. It's an, you've got an amazing a story, an amazing journey that uh, you've come through, but you're really still on. You're not, you're not. At the, yeah. I feel like it's just know. begun. Yeah. You know? Right. We never, we I never finish, right. We're never finished, man. Cause yeah. uh, that's when you stop growing when you that's think right. you're done. Uh, and, that, and that's what I love about this journey is the actual growth that there right. is no finish line. We can just keep going and keep growing well, and it, learning. If you're not growing, you're dying. That is a tr no, no truer statement right there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to connect up here and um, did I wish you all the best in 22. It's going to be an amazing year. I can't wait to, to have you back on and get an update and see where things are going and see where things have been. Appreciate it, Neil. Yeah. Thank you so much, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. Hey, for everybody here uh, at Real Grit, I'm Neil Timmons reminding you that real estate requires real grit. I'll see you next time. If you like our content and want more, you can access it at realgritpodcast.com. You hear it guest after guest, instinctively you already know it, but let me call it out. The most expensive action is inaction. The real estate market is full of opportunities. You just need to uncover them. You can build a business that lasts for years, makes monumental impact in the lives of those that you love. It's not just about business, but about the freedom you get because of it. Have you ever heard the saying, if you wanna go fast, go alone. If you wanna go far, go together. I believe that partnering is essential. In fact, I partner with hardworking investors all the time. The point is that you can get a lot further with the right partner. Let me say it again, the right partner. If you've ever thought about partnering with anyone or if you have a partner now, I encourage you to download my free Partner in Profit Guide, which includes the top five must answer questions to evaluate a profitable partnership. You can find it at www.legacyimpactpartners.com. I'll see you in the next episode.